back to the GSL Code S. I am Wolf, and we just saw Seed continue his reign of terror. He wins the first game, he takes the second one, and he took out Startail Curious 2-0, advancing to the winner's match, which is about to unfold. Right now, he will be facing Ghost King in that winner's match. We will have a TVP. Abyan came off of a TVP win, where he also went for a 2-0 very quickly against Liquid Hero, showing some Marine tank play. Very, very well done in those two games. Now, I wonder what his plan is going to be in this series as well. He could continue on with the same type of strategy. I think that's even very likely based on how well he used it twice. I mean, a strategy that's unique like that seems like, oh, it's the type of build you throw in every once in a while. But in the case of Ghost King, aka Bjorn, it seems like the type of strategy that he thinks is actually standard that you can use twice in a row. You know, and this, even though we saw it in the second game more all in type of fashion, it's a very similar build in both games. Very similar compositions. Really loves his Marine tank, deals with High Templar even with Siege tanks rather than Ghosts. Yeah, ironically, I mean, he is Ghost King after all. Let's find out what. The strategy will be against Seed, the Illusionist, Protoss. The map is going to be Ohana. It's the GSL Code S Season 3. I am Wolf. This is brought to you by Monsieur J, our new sponsor. Let's start right now. It is time, down here at the bottom right, our Protoss player just going 2-0 against his Zerg opponent. He is... AJM Sid. Unique double Stargate build, an older build, but Seed definitely the guy who changes things up the most. His opponent used to be on the team Xenex, now is on the team Prime. He is Ghost King Prime. Oh, he is looking so stressed out in his booth. Look at him. I mean, he crushed Hero 2-0. And after both games clenched his chest, as if, you know, he thought he didn't even have it in him to do it. And this nerve issue is something that Seed does not appear to have right now, and that's going to be very important for how this game plays out overall. And we do see yet again, 3 for 3 for Bjorn. He will be taking a gas. And with that gas, we will likely see a similar build to what we saw in the first two games. I strongly feel Bjorn looks at this build not as a special build, a build to throw into a best of three, but a build that he thinks can become standard. I mentioned this earlier as well, but with Heart of the Swarm looking more and more like that Warhound unit, and the Widow Mines will make it possible to play Mech against Protoss, it's going to be something that I think all Terrans are going to look into a little bit more right now, trying to use more Mech in their play. Second, Barracks going down for Ghost King. Now this is exactly what we saw on our second game. He went to racks, hid exactly what he was doing, then went into siege tanks. So if the probe somehow comes in and sees the two racks, is he in? Oh, I thought for a second there maybe he was going to intentionally let the probe inside and see the two racks. The reactor is underway. As usual, not only is Beyond scouting, but denying mining at the close patch with his probes. Nice harassment there. And at this point, Bjorn is... He could potentially just do a regular 2 racks. Pressure, take an expansion, 
you know, even last game when I saw how he was doing, I was like, oh, he's going to do it QXC style where he gets medevacs out and gets fast medevacs and attacks, uh, puts pressure on his opponent before making the command serve. But he went into siege tanks instead. And this may be something we see again, but again, the beauty of this build from Bion is that it has a lot of options. And there is the first Marauder on the way as well as Stim. We saw Stim come out from Ghost King last time as well, but not Marauders. And the positioning of this, this SCB may indicate that he wants to hide something. I don't think he will. Second gas going down in the main base for Bion, and there is the factory. Nexus has already been started for Hero, who again will be going gate gate before Robo. Second and third gateways before Robo. Always a choice every pro us will have to make in this matchup. A tough choice to make. And Hero, of course, already saw with his probe the gas, but does not know what type of build he's facing. Now he's going to see this Marauder moving out here, and he's going to go, oh, okay, two racks. I, I do not have my gateways up just yet. I have one sentry here, second one popping out. If I get these two force seals down, I'm fine. And one force seal goes down. And this is a stressful situation for Hero. His gateways are not done yet. Bion does hesitate, however, because he is afraid the gateways may be done, in fact. Does decide to go home. So basically, an even trade. One force seal for one SCV. In the end, everything is pretty even after that exchange. And back at home for Byun, he has a tech lab on his factory. Will be producing siege tanks. Again, exactly the same build he did against Hero in game two. It's actually supply blocked right now as his depot does finish. This is a scary build. Oh, seed going double forge. Against this type of build, that can be devastating. That's a ton of gas he's going to be spending, plus the resources on the forges. Shuts down his unit production a little bit. His robotics facility is so late here that before he sees this coming, it's going to come. It's going to start attack. He's going to be under attack before he even knows what his opponent is doing. Very unfortunate build choice here. And again, Bion has completely tricked Hero with what he has shown. He's shown to be the master of that today. A lot of mind games going on here, and that is the beauty of this build, opening with the two racks. Because you have so many options with that, and if your opponent even sees the two racks, he doesn't know you're going to follow up with siege tanks. Such a scary thing to face. Now, obviously, with this, Hero will have the better upgrades when the attack commences, but with siege tanks firing on sentry-heavy composition with zealots, not very many stalkers, and very few, if any, Immortals. It's going to be very difficult for Hero to hold. Twilight Council goes down now, so he can get 2-2 upgrades, as well as Charge very soon. May decide to go for Blink first as well to deter potential drops, but he's about to find out that that is not on the menu. His first Observer is on its way across the map. And like I said, he's not going to see he's not going to see this push coming until it's already coming, and it is already coming on the map. See him pulling SCVs again, and oh man, this push. This time he's pulling even more SCVs than last time. Last time he pulled about eight. This time it looks like he's pulling about ten. And the observer will see this. Hero has got to be freaking out now. Starts an immortal immediately. He's gonna need every force field he can get. But once he once he forces the first few forces out, the tanks are just gonna siege. And then he can't force field anymore. Dark Shrine going down, a smart choice, I feel. I might, I, I mean, at this point, it's, it's impossible to even make photon cannons work. Elevator tactics coming in for Bjarni. Stims all of his Marines going in. The force fields are down. He takes a ton of damage on the ramp, and he actually gives up the Nexus. The Nexus is now Bjarni's for the taking. Almost loses a dropship there. That could have been critical. That would have... Uh, given him uh, no more vision of the high ground. That's the only medevac he has out right now. No more rallied across the map. He is making one in his main base, but this is terrible for Seed. He may face the same fate that Hero did. This medevac very low on hit points. He has to be careful with it. Now he's got Marines on the high ground. They can also get vision and win this force field falls. Bjorn will not hesitate. Another force field goes down, but the Marines do not care. They are so well protected by these siege tanks. He stems again. He takes out the robotics. Now the only thing left is the Dark Shrine. He has 55 energy on his orbital back at home. And he seems to be saving it. 
He's saving it indeed. He intentionally saves it. He's practiced this build so many times. He even makes a missile turret next to his siege tanks. This game is O-V-E-R over. Seed going to be taken out here by the same build that we saw. Two DTs being warped in. They are going for a counterattack, and right now the depots are lowered. There is a missile turret in the main base, but no units there. Even though if he gets the DTs in, this is going to be very, very difficult for Seed to win. One DT tries to come around the backside, is completely destroyed by the turret, and GG! Bjorn unstoppable with his marine tank builds today. 3-4-3. Three, three. And as I mentioned earlier, if Seed loses the first game 100% of the time so far, he also loses the second one. See if he can break that trend right now, because I don't know if anyone can stop Bjorn with these builds that he's doing. Two racks into Siege Tank play. He's taken what everyone calls the 1-1-1 one, one, one and turned it into a 2-1. Two, two barracks, one factory. Now, Seed's expression here, you can tell he's obviously a little bit frustrated with how that game went. He completely misread what Bjorn was doing. Had he scouted a little bit better, had he gotten the robo faster, he would have been able to prepare a little bit better. But it was a short two-player map. Did not have the opportunity to prepare. Bjorn hit everything so well. Showed Marauders. Made it apparent he was two-raxing. As a result, double forges were not very helpful. Double forge is the last thing you want against this build. It's a huge gas sink. The upgrades that you get are insignificant when your opponent has that many units out. Look at Bjorn, man. I love that Bjorn face. Oh, man. This is a tough situation for Seed. Look at his face. I mean, he's got this smirk on his face, but I think that's his way of trying to calm himself down. Look at how you can see his chest go in and out. You can see how stressed Bjorn is right now. But he's, like, actually taken all of these replays. He actually took replays out of the computer, grabbed them with his hand in the basement. He started adding all these chemicals to the replays. He was actually mixing. He had his goggles on, and he was like, I think this two racks on the siege tank two-player map all in is amazing. I've constructed it. I've made it. I've brewed it up in the lab, and I'm going to show it tomorrow. And no matter if they know it's coming or not, it is going to be tough to stop. Both games he did this again. First one he did against Hero, the second one he did it against Seed. He hid his unit composition so well, played such a good mind game. And this is going to be so, so difficult for Seed mentally. You know, the stat that he, every time he loses the first game, he loses the second game. Why is that significant? Not because it's going to be a trend that happens no matter what, but because it's something that obviously means his mentality is affected by that first game. Let's see if Bjorn can secure another 2-0 and advance to the next round of Code S, or if Seed will break the trend and tie it 1-1 here at the GSL Code S. I see red, but I'm not even stopping.